Today marks nine years since the death of Michael Brown in Ferguson. The metro area is honoring his life today with two memorial events. And our Sydney Stallworth is live in Clayton with today's tributes. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Michelle Rennie. On August 9th, 2014, Michael Brown was shot and killed in the streets of Ferguson following a confrontation with a Ferguson police officer. Mm -hmm. Now, his death sparked outrage in this community and far beyond, leading to demonstrations and calls for police reform. What the hell? They're honoring a criminal at a memorial? And it seems like they're leaving out quite a few details. Do they not know there was a grand jury where all the facts came out and Darren Wilson was found to have been justified and where the claims that Michael Brown had his hands up were debunked? Of course they do, but what we're watching is the creation of a big lie and an attempt to revise history. This myth was notably endorsed by CNN in a highly embarrassing and revealing on-air moment. Demanding a justice system that applies the same to everybody and honors our values. And you, uh, we want you to know that our hearts are out there marching with them. Please tweet us your comments. Poppy Harlow is up next. Fast forward to the present day, and there are still people who choose to disregard the factual evidence and commemorate Michael Brown as a victim, perpetuating the hands up, don't shoot myth. When I say people, I mean Democrats and the media, Fox News included. Now, organizers for these events in his honor are acknowledging that this painful moment of our past can hopefully usher in a new future for our community. A new community by perpetuating lies and revising history in order to protect the criminals that are destroying the community in the first place? Yup! Also later tonight, an organization started by Michael Brown's father, Michael Brown Sr., called Chosen for Change, will hold the second annual Black Ball Fundraiser Awards Gala. <laughs> They're still using a picture of him as a kid. Why not use this video of him pushing around a store owner that he just robbed just before he gets into a fight with a cop and tries to take his gun? Today marks nine years since the fatal shooting of Michael Brown Jr. in Ferguson. Fox 2's Taylor Harris reports as the community reflects on the changes that have been made in the hope for the future. What? On August 9, 2014, Michael Brown laid deceased on Canfield Drive in Ferguson for four and a half hours after being fatally shot by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. After robbing a store and then getting into a fight with a police officer where Michael Brown tried to take his gun. But of course, none of that is ever even mentioned. This glaring disparity between reality and the actual facts perfectly demonstrates the strategy of Democrats and their state media. They understand that through constant repetition, a falsehood can eventually be accepted as the truth, especially when countering it becomes tiresome. We all know those of us who try to point these kind of things out get smeared and demonized as right-wing conspiracy conspiracy theorists, which leads to many so-called normies in the public to just dismiss us out of hand. This brings us to Democrat Cori Bush. So she says, today is the ninth anniversary of Michael Brown's killing. Well, for one, he wasn't killed. He was shot in self-defense by an officer who was defending himself from Michael Brown, who was trying to take his gun. But she goes on, he would be alive today if the institutions of racism and white supremacy were eradicated. Well, I want to say again that there was a grand jury on this and they found no evidence of racism racial bias at all. He should be alive today. We will never forget. We will continue to fight for justice and accountability. So she's just going on as if there was never a grand jury. Uh, nothing ever changed. The hands up, don't shoot myth was never debunked. So one of the great things about Elon Musk getting control of Twitter is that now we have community notes and community notes have been calling out Democrats and the media over and over for things that they would have gotten away with before. The US DOJ concluded based on the available evidence that officer Darren Wilson acted lawfully and that the evidence and witness statements do not corroborate allegations of any wrongdoing in this case. You know, it's just like George Floyd, where the media and Democrats made the entire thing about race, even though in the trial, no allegations of racism were ever even made. So there were some pretty hilarious responses here, and I'll show you a few of them. The first one here from Andrew at Don't Walk Run Productions. I'm sure a lot of you watch his videos. He said he would be alive if he hadn't been a criminal or attacked a police officer. Aristophanes said he'd be alive if he didn't try to take a police officer's gun while the cop was very threateningly checks notes 
sitting in his patrol car, minding his own business. You are such a sophomoric dumb puppet. Exactly. And it's more than just sophomoric, it's dangerous because if you remember, their rhetoric around this incited riots, which led to death and destruction. While this does provide some entertainment, it's also kind of demoralizing because the fact is, Cori Bush and others like her will continue to perpetuate this lie to the extent that even Fox News affiliates do it. Nevertheless, folks like me will continue to remind people about what actually occurred. If you would like to support me in that effort, you can find all the links in the description or pinned comment. If you found this information valuable, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Feel free to leave a comment to share your thoughts on this blatant attempt to revise history.